The third type of construction that we're working with is dealing with angle bisectors. So if you hear the term bisect, the first thing you should think is we're going to cut something in half. And what are we cutting in half? We're cutting in half an angle. So what I've drawn here is angle A and angle B. Angle A is an acute angle and angle B is an obtuse angle. I'm going to go through and explain more in detail angle A and then I'm going to go through more quickly and show how it's not going to matter whether your angle is acute or obtuse. The process is still the same. So at this point you should know how to copy the lengths of segments and you should know how to copy an angle. So move an angle from one position to another. Now we want to figure out, all right, how do we cut this angle in half? And the same basic ideas and principles apply that we're going to use the properties of congruent triangles to show this. So just like before when we were copying an angle, we want to make an arc that goes through both sides of our angle. It doesn't matter what the arc length is, it could be this size, I could make it smaller, I could make it bigger. Generally speaking, I'm going to keep it somewhat closer to A because it's going to be easier to work with, but it really doesn't matter. The next thing you're going to do once you have that arc taken care of is you're going to take your point and say, all right, the distance between here and this point is about that. You want to pick some distance of a compass that's at least over halfway from this point to this point. You're going to put the point of your compass there. You're going to strike an arc somewhere in the middle of your angle there. Once you do that, you're going to move down here, take the point of your compass, and it's going to be that intersection point there, and you're going to use that to draw another arc over here. I'm going to switch hands and make it a little darker. So you have two arcs that are drawn that intersect at this point right here. So that's going to be the intersection point between those two uh, arcs. Now what you should notice is we first drew this segment right here and this segment right there. The radial distance of these two segments are the same. Now if you think of it this way, if we have, if we drew a dotted line from that point to that point and the same thing up here, we struck an arc going this way and this way using the same distance. So these segments also are going to be congruent to each other. So what we're basically doing is setting up two congruent triangles. So now when we draw a ray from point A through that intersection point, we've got what is going to be our angle bisector. And this is the reason why it's an angle bisector. We have a, uh, sides that are congruent here, sides that are congruent there. And this side is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So we have two congruent triangles, again, created here by our construction. Now, congruent triangles means that corresponding parts are going to be congruent. Now, these angles are corresponding angles, so these two angles are the same angle. If these two angles are the same, that means this whole angle was cut in half, so this ray right through here has indeed bisected angle A. So with that said, let's go through and look at this obtuse angle B. Same exact process. Pick an arbitrary compass length. Use that to strike an arc through both sides of your angle. Next, pick, an, pick a distance that's a little over halfway. Make an arc kind of in the middle. Do that with the other side also, keeping your distance the same. You've got two arcs that intersect in the middle there. Use point B. Find where those two arcs intersect. Draw a ray through it. That's going to be your angle bisector of an obtuse angle. The same ideas apply with the congruent triangles over here as are over here. So this angle right here should be the same angle as that one there. Now when you're doing this, I, wanna, I should be able to see these different arc marks, which should show that you're doing the correct process of showing that this is indeed an angle bisector. Now the last thing I want you to think about is what if I asked you to uh, create a 30 degree angle. So we want an angle that measures 30 degrees. Now you may be thinking, how can I do that if I don't have, an, uh, don't have a protractor? Well, really it's not too difficult. So think of it this way. If you can create an equilateral triangle, you should know that all three sides of an equilateral triangle are the same. So the measure of this side 
plus another side and the other side should all be the same length. So let's go ahead and do that. And while we're doing that, let's think about the angles. The angles of an equilateral triangle are also all going to be the same. So I need to go a little bit bigger here. So I'm going to have an intersection up there. This point here, that's also going to be an intersection point. So this side right here makes up one of the sides of an equilateral triangle. And so does this one. I'm going to do this one in a dotted line, and I'll show you why in a second. If this is an equilateral triangle, if all three sides are the same, all three angles have to be the same also. So 180 divided by 3 is 60, so that means this angle right here has to be 60 degrees. All right, now this is helpful because we want to create a 30 degree angle. If we know this is 60, we can use the idea of an angle bisector to cut this angle in half, which will give us a 30 degree angle. So again, using the construction methods for an angle bisector, use your compass, strike an arc through both sides of your angle, go about ha over halfway, make sure you're going over halfway, otherwise they won't intersect. Put the point of your compass, I have trouble doing this with my right hand, I need to switch to my left. Find the intersection of your arcs, connect that intersection with the vertex of that angle, and you should be able to see or show that this is going to be 30 degrees because we're cutting this in half. This also is going to be 30 degrees, so we've got two 30 degree angles. If you want, you can take out a protractor here and measure it. And if you did it correctly, depending on your level of accuracy, you can see that my 60 degree angle is pretty much right on. It's going right through the 60 here. 30, I'm a little off on my 30. According to this, my 30 degree angle should be coming a little bit through here, so I'm probably five degrees off on my 30 degree angle, but the idea is there. If you bisect a 60 degree angle, it should give you a 30 degree angle. So that's the kind of things that you could see with angle bisectors.